everybody, welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday. And today we are doing something new on the channel that we have not yet done. It is a set break of 1960 tops. This is the 60th anniversary of this set. And what I did was I took a complete set of 572 cards. And Heather and I made up a whole bunch of packs with these cards. So every single card from the set will be represented in these packs. Uh, obviously, we weren't able to find any real wrappers of 1960 tops, so I took the image and made my own packs. Uh, a wrapper alone costs like 80 or $90 a piece. If you're going to buy an unopened pack of 1960 tops, you're probably going to pay a couple thousand dollars for it to tell you the truth. Uh, and I looked on eBay to see if there were even any sold listings within the, within the past three months of 1960 packs or 1960 boxes, not a single one. You can't find this stuff anymore, unfortunately. So we're doing the, the next best thing. We made our own. So originally there was five cards per pack. In our packs, there are 11 cards in here, and each pack has a number on the back. We go from one to 52. Uh, so we'll start with pack number one. So here's what we're going to do. The order is going to be all random. So I have all 52 names ready to go on my randomizer. I'm going to randomize the list, and then uh, we'll just go with that. So a little bit of clerical work. Let's zoom in on the computer because nobody knows exactly where they fall yet in the break, but we're going to figure that out right now. So here you see the random.com. There is everybody's name. Uh, all 52 people that uh, bought into this break. And here we go. We're just going to do it one time to get this break started, and I'll tell you where you fall. All right, so first up, Chris Mills has the first spot. Dan has number two. Jeffrey, three. James, you have four. Wayne has five. Matt has six. Richard, seven. Dan has pack eight. Pablo's got pack nine. Greg, pack 10. Keith has pack 11. J uh, Jim has pack 12. John has pack 13, Rich 14, Camille 15, Adam has 16, Dan has 17, Avery has 18, Ramiz 19, Scott 20, 21 is Anthony M, 22 is Joseph Rice, 23 is IC Kid, 24 Chad, 25 is Tony, 26 is Paul, aka 357 Maga, 27 is Manuel, 28 we got Stephen, aka Andy, 29 is Ramiz, one more time, 30 is Brian, 31 is Jack, 32 is Brian, 33 is Pablo, 34 Matt, 35 David, 36 Brad, 37 Alan, 38 is Benjamin, 39 is Philip, 40 we have Keith, 41 Tony, 42 is Daniel, 43 is Clem, 44 is Andrew, 45 is Manuel, 46 is James, 47 is Norman, 48 is Todd, 49 is Jack, 50 is Rich, Scott, you have 51, and Robert H. has 52. So that is the order. There are going to be uh, three Mickey Mantles in these packs. Uh, his base card, he also has an all-star card in here. And uh, I believe he has uh, an insert card as well. We'll be seeing all of those. Every Hall of Famer will be represented. For those of you just joining, I bought an entire set, made up these packs, one Hall of Famer per pack. I wanted to make sure everyone got a Hall of Famer. Some of you are going to get a Roberto Clemente or a Bob Gibson or a Sandy Koufax, Hank Aaron, Mickey Mantle. Others of you may get uh, one of the lesser-known Hall of Famers. I, I guess no Hall of Famer is lesser-known, but guys like... Uh, I don't know, like Hoyt Wilhelm or um, Walter Alston, all those types of guys. So here we go. All the packs have been laid out on the screen. They'll stay there for the entire duration of the video. And here we go. Pack number one. As you see on the back, I made up all these packs, and I had Heather go through and said, Heather, can you please put the numbers in here for me? And she did that. So, Chris, you have the first pack. Best of luck to you in spot number one. We wanted to randomize during the live stream. Um, just to make sure everybody knows that uh, we're not favoring anybody. Everyone gets the same shot at the Mickey Mantle. So here we go. First card up, it's a rookie star of Duke Carmel from the St. Louis Cardinals. And if you're wondering about the condition of the cards, as I told you on the Patreon page, a lot of these are a VG3. So if you sent these into PSA, you'd be looking at maybe a 2, 3, or 4 grade. And a lot of them on the back do have grades. I got these from Dean's cards. That one doesn't. Next up, we have Marty Katina, I guess. Some of these names I haven't 
see like seeing these players play, I haven't heard their names called, so I may not say all the names right. And I do apologize for that. We have Kansas City A's coaches. Yes, the Kansas City Athletics. We have an Eddie Brassald from the San Francisco Giants. There's random card rips with Ryan says, those packs look pretty sweet. Good luck all. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And Mr. K, you are correct. Roger Maris was the MVP in 60 and 61. Uh, yes, this is. All these packs, uh, this is a set break. So uh, if you don't know what a set break is, basically that's we take a complete set of 572 cards and uh, put them into packs. Uh, here we go. Baltimore Orioles team coaches once more. We have a Bob T uh, Trowbridge, I guess. Missing his hat right there from the Kansas City Athletics. Cookie Lavaghetto, manager for the Washington Senators. Pretty nice one. And uh, Sexton says that Roger Maris should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, um, Roger Maris, of course, as many of you know, uh, had 61 home runs in 1961. Byron with a 99-cent super chat. Thank you very much, Byron. I really appreciate that. Random card rips for Ryan as well. So those packs look pretty sweet. Good luck all. I really appreciate the support. Pittsburgh Pirates, World Series champion in 1960. We got Bobby Thompson, the shot heard round the world. Not a Hall of Famer, but still a nice cool card right there. And your Hall of Famer is Luis Aparicio. Kind of reminds me a little bit of an early version of Omar Vizquel. Uh, very, very good glove guy. Uh, not the, the greatest, adequate with the bat, not a power hitter, but Luis Aparicio is our first Hall of Famer. And another Hollis build says, ended at 104 last night. Next goal, 150. Not another Hollis build. Congratulations on blowing past 100 subscribers. And uh, help him get to 150, guys. And Camille with a $10 super chat. Camille, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Dan says, I have pack number eight. Hopefully I get a Yaz at spot number eight. Thanks, Jabs, for this sweet break. Dan, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I hope you guys will check out Dan, Camille, and also another Hollis build. Next up, speaking of Dan, we go from Dan P to Dan T. This is spot number two. Best of luck to you, Dan. Hopefully we can find something that you like. Uh, the Sports Collector. This is a set break, so it's not a sealed box break, just like it says there. You got box breaks, which is opening packs, and then set breaks, which is what this is. Probably get that question a lot. Uh, here we go. Pack number two. There's Lou Klimchok from the Kansas City A's leading things off. Then there's John Buzzard. From the Philadelphia Phillies, back then there was only a grand total of 16 teams in the league, by the way. So you're going to be seeing a lot of these. Hey, there's Rippin for Rookies. He says, let me some vintage cards. Good luck, everyone. Rippin for Rookies. I really appreciate that. I hope you guys will check out Rippin for Rookies. There's Bud Daly. Thank you for the support. We got a Don Naughty Bart from the Milwaukee Brewers and says, did you get my sign up under Jay Emery? Uh, Hobby Gangsters, uh, if you didn't hear your name in the beginning, then we did not get your sign up, unfortunately. There's Bill Henry. A lot of people signed up for this, and um, unfortunately, we were only able to take the first 52 spots. Um, but if you guys like the set breaks, we can do more of these. It's the only way you're ever going to see uh, these opened on the channel, these super old cards, is that there's no more boxes or packs of these around. Matt W. says, thanks for doing this. Jabs upgraded to $26 level. Matt, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'll make sure I get your $26 package out uh, here probably tomorrow. Um, there were a couple people that signed up for that new tier. So there's Art Schult. Looks like he's winking right there. Very, very nice looking car right there. That one looks to be in good condition. They rate that one at a VG3. Then there is Joe Cunningham from the St. Louis Cardinals. All these cards are landscape, which is pretty cool, except for the uh, manager cards. And yes, this also, this set break is not in order. It's totally random. Heather and I made these up. Hey, there's Don Larson, Mr. Perfect Game. With the Kansas City Athletics right there, Don Larson is a nice one. He's not a Hall of Famer. Here comes your Hall of Famer, Dan. It is going to be Nellie Fox from the Chicago White Sox. Nice long career at second base. Uh, usually he would hit right around 300 every single year. Very solid player, multiple year All-Star. They rate that one at VG3. You can see Dean's made it easy for us. They put Hall of Fame on the back of all these cards. 
So that is pack number two in the books. Yes, Sports Collector, every single card from the 1960 set is in here. So there's none missing. There's going to be a Clemente. There's going to be Mantle. There's going to be Roger Maris, Hank Aaron. Everybody that was in the set is in these packs right here. Jason, these were, what, like $60, $64 a pack? Next up, Jeffrey. You were randomized at spot number three. There's your pack. Best of luck to you, Jeffrey G., Hope we can find something that fits into your collection. I know some of you guys have PCs of certain guys. Let's see what we can find for you. This was the design in 1960. Yeah, anything that was in the set, Jamie counts the card checklist included. Silent Collector of the Popcorn Emoji. Silent Collector, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Make sure that you check out Silent Collector. And Rippin' for Ripkins is here. So we had Rippin' for Rookies and Rippin' for Ripkins with a very generous $20 Super Chat. Says, cool idea, Eric. Good luck to everyone in the set. And enjoy the 60-year-old cards. Rippin' for Ripkins. Thank you very much. Great channel over there. Make sure you check Corey out. And if you have any Ripkins, make sure that you hit him up. Uh, he would be very happy to trade or buy those cards off of you. Uh, make sure you check them out. Thanks, Corey. I really appreciate that. We start off here with a nice-looking Jim Gilliam card from the L.A. Dodgers. As you know, they moved to L.A. Uh, shortly after, what was it, after the 56th season or 57th season. There is Camilo Pasquale right there. Uh, Sports Collector says, thanks so much for this amazing video. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. We got a rookie card here of Julio Navarro. Some of you may have seen this card already or at least this design, probably waiting for the Carl Yastrzemski. Carl Yastrzemski's got a rookie card in the set along with Willie McCovey. Those are the two big ones. Brent's Car Break says, excited for this break. 11 subscribers away from 100. We've got over 800 people in here. I hope you guys will check out his channel. Just make sure you check out the link that Daddy Daughter drops in there. Brent, I really appreciate the support. There's a New York Yankees, Deron Johnson, rookie star. Sports Collector, thank you very much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. And uh, looks like pack number two or three for Jeffrey, a pretty darn good uh, rookie pack here. You have a Topps All Star rookie outfitter, Ron Fairley. Nice looking card right there from the Dodgers. The Dodgers, by the way, won the World Series back in 59. So I think that we're going to be seeing a 59 World Series card. There's Joe Adcock, Milwaukee Braves first baseman. Uh, pretty decent player there. Next we have Gus Bell. Uh, I believe he was one of the one of the uh, oh, his son was Buddy Bell and then David Bell, right? So David Bell's grandfather, I do believe. Nice card right there. There is Ken McKenzie. You can see there's a crease in there. That one's obviously going to be like a. And they gave that one a VG. I would have given that one a two because of that light crease. Uh, how about Rocky Colavito? All of you Cleveland Indians fans, that's a very uh, popular name up there from the late 50s and 60s. Rocky Colavito, really solid player there. And your Hall of Famer, former um, Rookie of the Year, Orlando Cepeda, 1960 Tops card. You Giants fans know about Cepeda. That is the Hall of Famer for Jeffrey. Uh, congratulations on that one. That is a VG3 Cepeda for you. All right, so pack number three is in the books. Phil Gross said it should be at least a six, seven. Some of these cards, I look at them like, really, they gave that a three? I would probably, yeah, put that at a five, six. And then some of them like, what? They gave it a three? That should be like a, a one or a two. Um, but you never know. I guess it all depends on the eye of the beholder when grading cards. Uh, next up in spot number four, this set is a PSA three set. Or not a PSA set, but... Uh, it's a uh, VG set, so all the cards, the average grade works out to be a three. Number four up, it is James. Best of luck to you. Let's see what we can find. There's your pack. Let's get it opened up. One Hall of Famer per pack. So we start off with Luke, how's it going? There is Jim Busby leading things off for the Boston Red Sox. That card looks to be in some shape. Now, like I said on Patreon, some of the cards have writing on the back. Luckily, this one doesn't. Emiliano Brito with $1.99. Welcome back, Emiliano. Good to see you checking in tonight. Chicago White Sox pitcher. I, of course, wasn't even born in 1960. I'm not sure how to say his name. Don Ferrar. S.C. Totally missed that one up. Billy Pierce, Chicago White Sox. Then we have a Bill Bruton, Milwaukee Braves 
Steve says, this is fun. Thank you very much, Steve. I really appreciate that. How about a rookie card of Chica Cardenas from the Cincinnati Reds? I like these 1960 rookie stars. Lou Brock is a Hall of Famer card breakers, but his rookie card is 1962 top. So he's not in this, unfortunately. But if you guys like the set breaks, we can do 62 tops at some point. There's Milt Pappas, Baltimore Orioles. For you Yankees fans, we have a Tony Kubek, shortstop outfielder. A mess of things says, Byron says, coffee on the house for Heather. A mess of things. Thank you very much. By the way, I sent you, you uh, a bunch of packs and about, I don't know, like 5,000 cards today, man. Big flat rate box coming your way. Keep an eye out for that. There's Bubba Phillips. Thank you very much. A mess of things. Make sure you check him out. And uh, Earl Torgerson. Here comes the Hall of Famer. It's going to be Cincinnati Reds second baseman. Actually, it's going to be after the Hall of Famer. Billy Martin. Despite being a huge name, not a Hall of Famer, but um, was always in the news for his run-ins with George Steinbrenner when he was a manager. That's a nice card right there. Most of you remember Billy Martin in a Yankees uniform. So that's a good one for James. And your Hall of Famer is Red Shane Deanst from the Milwaukee Braves. Most of you remember him as a Cardinal. Emiliano Brito is back again says, hi. Thank you, Emiliano. I really appreciate that. Good to see you back. Sean says, where's the bubble gum? Well, the complete set did not come with bubble gum. And as this is a set break and not a, um, a box break, there is no bubble gum. My mom said that she used to buy cards all the time back in the late 50s and early 60s. And um, there was she would buy it for the bubble gum. And um, I guess her mom, my grandma, threw all of her cards away. And uh, she probably had a bunch of these, probably tons of uh, Clementes and mantles and all of that, unfortunately. Spot number five is for Wayne. Best of luck to you. Um, you were placed in spot number five as we did the randomizer prior to the break. Here we go. Spot number five. Uh, Tim Magdalena says, thanks for the nice Bo Bichette auto last night. Love it. Could use a few more followers. Giveaway is coming up soon. Tim, thank you very much. And Jays, how's it going? Good to see you here. I really appreciate that. Make sure you check out Tim's channel, everybody. There's the Chicago White Sox, the AL pennant winners in 1959. They would go on to lose to the uh, Dodgers in six games in 59. Some quality players on that team. There's Heather with the link for Tim. Make sure you check him out. Norm Seaburn from the New York Yankees. I feel like I may have put this set together for my dad um, at one point. One of the things I used to do back in my 20s is I would try to set build. Um, and I think I'm fairly sure I put the 60 set together in the 57 as well. Um, I can't exactly remember which. There's Rocky Nelson for the Pirates, World Series champions of 1960. Al Pilarsic from the Baltimore Orioles. Now, a lot of these guys, Heather was asking me as she was uh, helping me randomize these cards. They're not in any order. Like, if you look at the back, we have card 208, 11, 157. Emiliano Brito says, sorry for not being here lately. Emiliano, thank you very much. Welcome back. Uh, really glad to have you back, man. No hard feelings. I know everyone gets busy. There's Andy Carey from the New York Yankees. But she was like, uh, there's Clum Labine, nice one from the Dodgers. She said, um, how many of these guys are still alive? And I was like, that's a good question. This was 60 years ago. So if the average age of these players was like 28, a lot of these guys are in their late 80s, early 90s right now, which is uh, you know, pretty amazing. I think Dick Grote is still around, which is the um, – National League Most Valuable Player from 1960. Gene Woodling from the Orioles. We have a Joe Pign Pignatano catcher for the Dodgers. Ted Klazuski, who used to love to show off the guns. There he is in his White Sox uniform. You might remember him, how he would always cut off his sleeves to show off the, the biceps. Ted Klazuski. And Emiliano Brito says, all my booze left me. Rest in peace. That is very, very sad, Emiliano Brito. It was only a matter of time uh, with three different booze that that was going to happen. Um, Gene Woodling passed in 2001. This is amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have the entire 1960 top 10. There he is, Bill Mazeroski, Hall of Famer and the hero of the 1960 World Series. Bill Mazeroski hit Game 7 walk-off home run against the Yankees over the left field wall at Forbes Field. One of the uh, iconic plays, um, at least in Pittsburgh history, everyone knows Bill Mazeroski's name if you follow any sports at all. And he also is a local guy who lives just down the road uh, from me about 10 minutes away. Uh, he's still around. 
I think he still does signings every now and then. So, Wayne, thank you very much. Congratulations on Bill Mazeroski. Four-way. Next up, pack number six. Let's see what we can find. Who was randomized into the sixth spot of the order? I'm just trying to make sure I get Wayne's cards in his pack nice and neat. This little printout here. How much did this cost? I, I think it was $60 or $64 per pack. It definitely was around there. Here we go. Next up, spot number six. This is for Matt. Best of luck to you, Matt W. Let's see who your Hall of Famer is. Hey, Jono, how's it going? Pack number six. We start off. Jono says, hey, guys, fun break. These are clean. Yeah, these. Uh, this is a VG set, so that's, they're in very good condition, which um, would equate to, like, a an, on average, like a PSA 3. There's a Charlie James St. Louis Cardinals card. Bob Oldis. I remember my dad had about three or four of this card. I remember seeing this one all the time. My dad had a lot of 1960 cards. Uh, I feel like that was maybe the year he had the most cards. Like, for me, my... Biggest year for cards was 1993. There's Woody Held, shortstop for the Cleveland Indians. We have Duke Moss from the Yankees, not Kevin Moss. I don't know if there's any relation right there, but that's a nice one. Duke Moss. Is Mickey Mantle worth something? The Mickey Mantle, I know in a, like a PSA uh, 7 is worth like three thirty five hundred something like that. Ray Monzant from the Giants. Nice looking card right there. Look at those stands back there, all those literal box seats. Cool, cool card. Constipated in Sin City. How's it going? Roger Craig, you remember this guy, former manager. I used to remember seeing him march on out to the mound as a manager for the Giants. We have a rookie all-star pitcher, Jim Perry. So pretty cool that Tops was still doing this way back in 1960, giving the gold cup. You know the gold cup that's on the cards? To the top rookie in each position, like Jordan Alvarez has a gold cup on his card this year. Well... They did it way back in 1960 and made the cards look pretty cool, too. The Gold Cup was a lot bigger back then. Still pretty cool. Mr. Case says Jim Perry had a very good career. It's a good card right there. Barry Latman, Chicago White Sox is a nice one. We have Don Williams from the Buckos. Here comes the hit. Now, Jackie Robinson retired by this time, Cameron. He was not around. He did not want to go out to L.A. Irv Norin, here comes the Hall of Famer. It is a Willie Mays. So, Matt, you have... The first huge name, Willie Mays, all-star cards. You see in the background, the 60. Willie Mays has, I think, three cards in this set. This is one of them. He also has a uh, card with his manager, and he also has his base card. So the Say Hey Kid 1960 Tops card, also pretty cool because Mays ended up hitting 660 home runs. So Hall of Famer, Willie Mays in VG3 condition. Nice hit right there. So, Matt, congratulations. So far, that's probably the best one of the break in terms of star power. But there's still more maze to come. Uh, Roberto Clemente, Mickey Mantle cards, and the like. So, spot number six is in the books. Number seven, looking at my list over here on the randomizer that we ran at the outset of the break. Richard Sasco, you're up now in number seven. May's PSA 3 All-Star car goes for up to $100, says Devlin. Let's see what we can find in spot number 7. And Jim Perry won the Cy Young Award in 1970, says Jamie. Good information, everybody. Carly Strzemski rookie card will be in one of these packs. You can, uh, I can guarantee that because uh, Heather and I made these packs together, and I remember looking at it. All right, so here we go. Boston Red Sox. I don't know which pack has which, as Heather put these numbers in there for me. And we also randomized all the, the names ahead of time. Uh, so you guys can uh, be certain that I have no idea where it is. Frank Malzone, Dave Sisler, Detroit Tigers card. We have a Camilo Carrion or Carrion from the Chicago White Sox, 1960 star card. Umberto Robinson from the Philadelphia Phillies. Then we have Ronnie Hanson. A little bit of a printing issue with this card. Little specks of black ink on there. Some cards would always have printing issues. I know the 1978 Alan Trammell rookie card is uh, very, very problematic um, with Paul Malder. Lots of those have printing errors or smudges. There's Sammy Taylor catcher for the Chicago Cubs. We have a uh, Richard Gray. I'll just say Richard instead of this first name because of the YouTube robot sensors out there. We have a Sammy Esposito, and look who's coming up. A lot of you guys wanted to see this guy right here, 
Roger Maris, who won the most valuable player in the American League in 1960, the year this came out, and also the following year as well when he hit 61 home runs. Unfortunately for Maris, his career took uh, a pretty sharp downturn after those few seasons, and uh, by the time he re reached age 30, he just was not uh, the same guy. 260 career hitter. Um, a lot of people think that he should be in the home run, or not in the home run, in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he does have relics and stuff in the Hall of Fame, but not a plaque. So your Hall of Famer, it's Whitey Herzog. Whitey Herzog is the Hall of Famer. Most of you know him as the Hall of Fame manager for the um, St. Louis Cardinals. So for me, I, I like the Maris more than the Herzog, but um, that's just me. Maybe Maris will get in someday on a veterans committee. We shall see. Uh, Harold Baines is in. I still have hope that maybe, just maybe, Maris will get in as well. Next up, spot number eight is for Dan. Best of luck to you. We'll see what we can find for you in pack number eight. I see a super chat coming up from Jason. Jason says, it's pretty sad that Kelly got an eight-game suspension when none of the cheating Astros players were. Thank you for all you do for this hobby. That's a great way to look at it. The Astros cheated, <laughs> and none of them got suspensions whatsoever, and... Some people were pointing out that Joe Kelly got a suspension despite not even hitting a batter, just merely throwing at them. So, I don't know. I think it's too much. I do feel like if you do throw at a batter, maybe you should have a suspension if it's on purpose. But eight games, come on, that's way too much. That equates to, I think, uh, 22 games over the course of a 60-game um, season. So, here we go, Dan. Let's see what we can find for you. We have Bob Hale leading things off from the Cleveland Indians. Then there's an Ed Boucher from the Philadelphia Phillies, and he looks like he's up to no good. Look at that face that he's making right there. Interesting card. We have a Cal Miklish, Cincinnati Reds pitcher. Some of you folks may remember these players if you are, I don't know, maybe if you're in your, in your 70s, maybe you actually saw some of these guys play. A lot of you guys that are baseball historians I uh, will definitely recognize some of these names. Wayne Terwilliger, Kansas City Athletics. We have a Seth, Mo Seth Moorhead, Chicago Cubs pitcher. Then there's a Frank Howard, 1960 rookie star card. Nice one right there. George Strickland from the Cleveland Indians, third baseman. We have a Carol Hardy, outfielder for the Indians. Richard Drott, Chicago Cubs. Daryl Johnson, Hall of Fame time. It is going to be Ernie Banks, 1960 All-Star card. So, Mr. Let's Play to Ernie Banks, 512 career home runs. And, uh, man, he was a good one. Chicago Cubs fans love this guy. He is a statue outside of Wrigley Field. Shortstop National League right there. They put it at a VG3. Nice card. Ernie Banks for Dan. Congratulations on the Banks. Solid hit right there. And Spurry says, Hey, Eric, have you seen the Hannes Wagner? I actually have seen the Hannes Wagner in person at the National. It was behind glass and protected by security guards. So uh, that's about as close as I could get. But I do believe that I took a little video of it at one of those Nationals. My brother and I have been to a couple of those Nationals. So you can probably find that footage on one of the old videos. Next up at spot number nine, we have Pablo... Iglesias, let's see what we can find for you in spot number nine. I'm going to see every single card coming out of this set for those of you that love the 1960 top set. We have a Ray Narleski leading things off. Dallas Green, you might remember him as a manager. I remember Dallas Green. Uh, Jane W. says, some of these guys still sign TTM. That's through the mail. I've sent a few. That's pretty awesome. These guys that are in their 80s right now, if you send them a card, like if Jerry Lump is still around, I'm not sure if he is or not, but he may sign the card and send it back to you. Bob Skinner, I'd probably give this card maybe a two at best. Yep, they give it a two right there. This is a little bit of scuffing right there, so I agree with that grade. Tony Gonzalez from the Cincinnati Reds. We've got George Crow, St. Louis Cardinals' first baseman. Sport Collector says, who has a better chance of making it in the Hall of Fame? Strawberry Mattingly? I would say Mattingly personally. Um, I would say three times more likely, in my opinion. I think Mattingly will get in eventually. Bob Turley is a nice one as well. There's Jerry Lynch. 
Uh, Byron says, Ernie Banks was a very nice guy. I had the pleasure of sitting down with him and talking to him. That's pretty awesome. Kurt Raiden. And here comes the hits. Jake Stryker. It looks like the Hall of Famer is going to be a third baseman for the Senators. Any idea who that could be? That's Harmon Killebrew. Harmon Killebrew is the hit right there. Congratulations to Pablo. And uh, appears the card is in decent shape. Uh, no creases on this bad boy. Harmon Killebrew for Pablo. Very nice. Spot number nine. All of you guys know Killebrew. Some of you have uh personally collect him so that's a pretty nice hit right there phil says dude could smack the ball yeah he definitely could he would put a hurting on that ball scott says that does ted williams have a card in this set unfortunately williams does not have a card in the set if you'd like me to search for williams we can go back and do some of the older releases and uh, search for him cards from the early 50s <laughs> be probably a little more expensive to buy a set of those is uh the earlier you go the more they cost Unless you get a really off-grade set where they're all creased and written on and stuff like that. There's a super chat from El Canon. says, Sweet opening jabs. Love the vintage today. Lots of stupendous creators in here. Check out uh, Passes Live. Rookie and Prospect Card Collector FDC Family Cards for some fun. El Canon, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And Vero Tony says, Would love to trade for whoever gets the Roberto Clemente. So if you get Clemente in your pack, keep Vero Tony in mind. And maybe work out a trade. Elkanon and Vero, thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate that. I hope that you will check their channels out. John Fishman says, I stole money out of my grandma's purse to buy Craig Paquette <laughs> PSA 10s. Another great hobby tip from John Fishman today. Today, the uh, the tip is Craig Paquette PSA 10s. How much did you pay for those? I, I don't even know why you would get a Craig Paquette even graded and spend like 10 to, depending on your tier of PSA, $10, $15 to get that card graded. And ABC's Need123 says, Hi, Eric. Stopping in to say hi before my stream. Good luck to everyone. Anthony, thank you very much. I hope you guys will check out John Fishman and ABC's Need123 as well. Great channel right there. Check them out, everybody. Uh, as we go into Greg's right now, there's Buddy Gilbert leading things off. We have Billy O'Dell. From the Giants is our card number two. Gene Fries, card number three from the Chicago White Sox. Tom Acker, Kansas City Royals pitcher. We have a Daryl Spencer from the St. Louis Cardinals. Some of you guys may have had some of these cards in your collection growing up. Larry Jackson, Cardinals pitcher, so back-to-back -back Cardinals. Jack Fisher, I don't know if uh, any relation to John Fishman. Probably not. It was just in here. Tom Brewer, Hall of Famer coming up. Uh, it's going to be after this Glenn Hobby and also the Gil Hodges game-winning home run right there. Gil Hodges. And uh, let's see who the Hall of Famer is. Hall of Famer. The back card in every pack is going to be a Hall of Famer. What I did is I made sure every pack had a Hall of Famer. So I started out with the Hall of Famers. It is Don Drysdale, who had an absolutely fabulous career. Cut short. Uh, Don Drysdale pitched uh, basically until he was like 30 years old and then had to hang it up with a bad shoulder. But uh, he was a Hall of Famer uh, for sure. I missed a couple of Super Chats. I got ABC's lead one, two, three, and uh, also I got John Fishman. I don't see any other ones at the top of my screen. If I did miss yours, I do apologize, and I hope you guys will check them out. So Don Drysdale, also a pretty darn good announcer back in the day as well. Nice card right there. 1960 All-Star card. For Greg, Don Drysdale. We'll be seeing Drys coming up again. Yeah, Gil Hodges is not in the Hall of Fame, DJ. A lot of people think that Hodges should be in there. He's kind of like right on that cusp of guys that should be in there. Guys like Hodges and um, Maris, Mattingly. Uh, a lot of people think Dale Murphy. Jim Cott gets a mention of somebody that's right at the precipice of getting into the Hall of Fame. Spot number 11, if you missed it. The randomization at the outset of the video. This one is for Keith. So, Keith, you are up right now. Uh, Constipate in Sin City says, Don Drysdale was married to a professional golfer named Nancy Lopez. I did not know that. And Drysdale was 32 when he hung it up with a bum shoulder. Uh, that's why I always say if Clayton Kershaw retired right now, he also would be a Hall of Famer. He's at that point in his career, just absolute domination. All right, Keith, here we go for you. You got Russ Nixon leading things off, and we have a Don Cardwell at spot number two. Raul Sanchez from the Cincinnati Reds. OMG Cardpools here says, hey, everyone, such a fun break. Looking forward to the fire tonight. Keep up the awesome breaks. OMG Cardpools. I really appreciate that. I hope you guys will check out OMG Cardpools, everybody. He does nice work over there. Uh, always opening up cards 
uh, on a regular basis. So check them out. Thank you very much, OMG. There's Daddy Daughter with the link. Jim Donahue, Donahue, Gino Simoli, Chuck Stobbs. We're getting to the Hall of Famer. And who is it going to be? There's Del Rice. We have a Rocky Colavito and Tito Francona right there. That's the father of Terry Francona. The Hall of Famer is going to be George Anderson, which if you don't know who George Anderson is, you may know him as Sparky Anderson. That's Sparky Anderson. All of you Tigers fans know Sparky, the legendary manager from the Tigers. Very nice one right there. Sparky Anderson. His rookie card was just a couple years before this. I believe it was 1958 tops. So, nice early Sparky Anderson for Keith. Shout out to you, Card Breakers. Thank you very much for being here. The RMM says, I've never seen Sparky that young before. Yeah, everyone's used to seeing Sparky uh, all kind of weathered in, uh, in his older age. But uh, he was quite the manager. Jim Marco's up next. Best of luck to you. Jim, let's see what we can find to you. Spray, thank you very much. I'm just glad that you're here hanging out. Spot number 12. All right, we lead off with a Mike McCormick, and it looks like this card, there's some kind of issue with like almost a, looks like the card in front of it was had was sticking to it. You can see how, I wonder who it was. It'd be crazy if it was like a mantra or something like that. They put that one at a two. We have an Ed Hobaugh rookie card. Harry Simpson from the White Sox. Then we have a Neil Chrisley. Billy Goodman is up next. There's an Andre Rogers, San Francisco Giants. J.C. Martin from the Chicago White Sox. We got a Gold Cup card coming up after the Jim Coker. It is a Willie Tasby. Nice looking one right there. Ray Boone, one of the generations of Boone. Ray Boone, Bob Boone, and, of course, Aaron Boone and Brett Boone. And here's the Hall of Famer, Chicago Cubs outfielder. Who do you think that might be? That's... Richie Ashburn, who most of us remember for his time with the Philadelphia Phillies. He has a whole gate named after him. It's Citizens Bank Park. I actually think it's the entire left field pavilion called Ashburn Alley. Very nice card right there. Phillies legend for Jim. Richie Ashburn is the next hit. As we move ahead now to spot number 12. Just trying to get... I hate it when I put these back in the team bag and then the team bag is like sticking on itself and I have to recalibrate it so it works out. All right, so lucky number 13. Hopefully whoever has this one doesn't have a fear of that number, tryptodecophobia. It is for John Perella. So best of luck to you, spot number 13. Judges says lots of nice cards still out there. Yeah, still looking for Hank Aaron, Mickey Mantle. Let's see what we can find. Right now, we have Eddie Fitzgerald leading things off. There's Noah Intiso says, Hi, Eric. We just finished our live raffle for the Big Bat Box. Give away Alvarez, Lux, and Bichette Autos. That's pretty crazy. Uh, I'll be opening up the Big Bat, Big Bat Box soon, probably tomorrow. And make sure you, you check that video out tomorrow. We also have Face Off Friday. And good news, everybody. I was able to track down two more museum collection cases a lot of you love the museum collection break, so we're going to be doing that on Sunday again, an encore. I could not believe how good the museum collection was. If you went to bed early and missed the end of the museum collection break, you missed uh, three Mike Trouts. Two of them were autographs. One was out of five. Go back and watch it if you missed it. Ron Klein. And Schultz's card pool says, good luck to everyone. Hope you're doing well, Jabs. I've got a Bowman Blaster Box up for grabs tonight. Y'all can still get in on it if you like. So Schultz's card pools, thank you very much. Hope you'll check out Schultz's. There's Heather with Schultz's link. Thank you very much, Heather. Heather is not here in the house tonight, but she is working um, remotely. So she's still watching Charlie Maxwell. And we have Gene Conley from the Phillies. Hall of Famer coming up. But before we get to the Hall of Famer, how about a Zim? Don Zimmer in his younger days. A lot of you remember Don Zimmer. Um, unfortunately, his Older days were kind of defined by him being thrown to the ground by Pedro there up in Boston. Hall of Famer, it's a pitcher from the Tigers. Any idea who that could be? Who wants to guess it? First one to guess it? Well, it is Jim Bunning. Jim Bunning. I remember him on the Phillies as well. Nice one right there. Jim Bunning. The card looks pretty good shape. Uh, great color on this card. They didn't rate that card, but that one, um, despite being a little off-center, looks to be in very solid condition 
for John. So, John, your pack is in the books. Next pack up, spot number 14. This one, let me pull it off the uh, screen here. Um, we have Rich in spot number 14. Best of luck to you, Rich. Hope you can find something good. How much did each spot cost? It was $64 a spot, guaranteed Hall of Famer, plus 10 other cards. Um, so let's see what we get here. There's Joe Kopp from the Philadelphia Phillies. He got the Gold Cup card for the uh, shortstop position there. Top rookie in each position would always get the Gold Cup. Ruben Gomez, we have Paul Richards, manager for the Orioles. There's a Jack Meyer Phillies card. Yeah, DJ, Yastrzemski and McCovey rookies are in this set. We hopefully will be seeing them soon. Uh, Johnny Powers from the Orioles. There's Pete Wisenant, I guess. Wisenant. Some of these names, of course, I'm going to mess up for sure. We have an Al Worthington. And Frank Thomas, not the big hurt, but the other Frank Thomas that some people confuse. Uh, Frank Thomas, and here we go, Hall of Famer. It is Luis swipes a base. The Hall of Famer is Luis Aparicio stealing a base in the 1959 World Series. Very nice card right there, Hall of Fame, Luis Aparicio. They give that one a PSA. Well, not PSA. It's not PSA grade, but they rate that one out to a three. Nick says, what's the best set of all time? I really like 52, 53. I love the 50s tops sets. I love 52. I love 53. 56 I love. I think 57 is a beautiful set as well. 50 and 59, I'm kind of like, eh. They kind of like almost look the same. One has a little circle in the background. 60 is pretty nice. I love 61, 62. That's a great question. I don't know what I would put as the best set of all time, but a lot of the 50s and 60s, those classic uh, designs, love them. Camille's up next. Best of luck to you. And Noah says, it's so nice to see some cool vintage. Thanks, Eric. Noah, thank you very much. Yeah, I figure there's really no chance of ever being able to open a box of 1960 ever, uh, a sealed box at that. So I figured, why not? We'll just buy a, a set and break it up and repack it. One Hall of Famer per pack and see. That way you get to see every card at least. Uh, we could open up a box in 1960 not even find a McCovey or Yastrzemski in there, and that would be terrible to pay like, $150,000 for a box. I don't even know what it is. Um, they just don't exist anymore. Can't even find them. There's Earl Wilson, Red Sox card. Taylor Phillips. Don Mossy. Uh, this one should be a P. I would give this a PSA 1, but they gave that a 2. I don't know how that gets a 2 with all the creases in that one. Uh, Harry Anderson is the next one there. Then there's a Steve Ridzik. Ed Rakow and Hall of Famer coming up after that we see Bob Schmidt, Tom Morgan, and Jim Pearsall. Are these official top packs? No, these this is a set break. So instead of just doing like person one gets cards one through eight, that would be boring because you would obviously look ahead and see what cards you're getting. So I decided to try to reproduce the uh, appeal of opening packs and seeing what you're getting like. Camille, you have yourself a Whitey Ford. How about that one? Camille, I know, was really pleased with her DJ LeMayhew hit last night in Museum Collection. So I have a, an inkling that you love the Yankees, and I'm so happy that you got Whitey Ford, one of the iconic Yankees from this period. Great color on that one. Whitey Ford for Camille. Congratulations on that one. A good hit. Um, works out very well And that they gave that one a three grade. So most of these cards, just because of the corners, are going to end up with like a three grade. As most of the corners are a little bit rounded. Uh, some of them have creases, as you saw with the Don Mossy, but most of them are in the three range. Some are fours, some are threes, and some are twos. I looked at the back of every single card as I was going through, as I found that interesting. Um, spot number, what did... I think, Camille, we may have made a mistake. Yes, we have a mistake. We opened pack 16. So, Camille, I apologize. Looks like when I organized these, I screwed up. Pack 15 is for Camille. 16 is for Adam Lee. So, Adam, you actually have Camille's pack. How about that? Nobody caught it in the chat. So, Camille, you don't have the Whitey Ford. So, what I'm going to do for you, Camille, because I screwed up and I hate screwing up, 
Camille, you will have a Whitey Ford card mailed directly from me to your house. I'm going to buy one on eBay and send it directly to you from 1960 Tops Whitey Ford because I was super stoked that you were getting that. I'll find one that's in VG um, and send it right to you because I screwed that up. So, Camille, you actually don't have that. Adam has all of those cards. Um, so, Adam, I do apologize for not putting your name up there, but you have the Whitey Ford. And I'm going to have to pay closer attention to that. I don't know how those got mixed up. Uh, Camille, don't worry. I got you. Um, so now, Camille, let's see who your number 15 is. We have, for Camille, sorry about that, Adam. We have a Nelson Chittam Gil McDougald from the Yankees. Tex Clevin. Well, if, if Camille gets the mantle, then I'm going to feel bad for Adam. I'm going to have to buy a, a mantle for Adam or a, um, who, I'm just going to have to make it right. Danny Kravitz. There's a Bob Taliba, rookie star of Chuck Estrada. We have a Don Lee for Camille. This is your actual Pat Camille. Dick Gernert. Jim Cott rookie card is a nice one. And your hit is Dick Williams, which... Honestly, Camille might be the worst Hall of Famer you can find. No offense to Dick Williams fans, but uh, he made his career as a manager winning a couple World Series with the um, uh, Oakland Athletics. So, Camille, that's... <laughs> Go from a Whitey Ford to a Dick Williams as your card. I do apologize for that. And I have made a note for you, Camille, to send you the Whitey Ford after all because I screwed up. All right, so that's just going to show up at your doorstep. I'm going to buy the Whitey Ford and change my address and put your address in. Yes, Joe, these are all authentic. Um, it is a set, and here we go, number 17. Let's see what we can find. 17 is for Dan, so I'm going to be on the ball now looking at these like a uh, with a very close eagle eye. Spot 17, make sure those match up. Here we go. And Packrat says, I missed a super chat. Thank you very much, Pack. It says, keep the hobby alive. It says, hey, my dude, that's why people love you. Stand up guy, my man. $5 to help pay for the Ford. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, I really feel bad about that, Camille. And keep the hobby alive. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, Captain Chris says, five for the Ford as well. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. Camille, I, I might have to buy you a, a better condition Ford if people are pitching in for you. Uh, <laughs> I feel terrible about that. So we got 17. Dan, here we go. Um, we have a Ron Jackson leading things off. Then we have a Don Hoke. Heather, if you're watching right now, please make sure that I buy that Whitey Ford tonight and have that sent directly to Camille before we do anything, before we watch our shows or anything tonight. There's Don Hoke from the Buccos. We have Richard Hyde, Washington Senators card. We've got Wally Moon. Then Hank Hoyles. wonder if that's any relation to Chris Hoyles. Um, Chris Hoyles, of course, you guys know from the Orioles. There's Noah says another five for the Ford. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate that. Bob Bull. Uh, Paul Giel. I, I really, I remember when Camille got. I don't want to use poor language, but Camille got um, the short end of the stick on a what was it like a panini break where all the autographs fell on one side and I felt really bad for her. So I don't want her to get, uh, get uh, the short end of the stick twice. So we will definitely get that. I'm just going to buy it off eBay and have it sent directly to you. There's Wynn Hawkins. Elston Howard, New York Yankees card for Dan. That's a nice one. Elston Howard had some nice seasons for sure. And the Hall of Famer is Walter Alston, who got into the Hall of Fame because of his managerial um, excellence with the Dodgers. Long-time Dodgers manager in the 50s and 60s. That one goes to Dan, but the Elston Howard makes up for that hopefully a little bit for you. Dan P. says, PSA Whitey Ford 5 is $35. Buy it now, Dan. I think that's completely... That seems really cheap, actually. I, I'm, Camille, I'm going to have to buy you a PSA Whitey Ford now that I know that information. Send that your way. Thank you very much for that info. And John says, I would send him Brad Osmus over the Ford, FYI. So now John Fishman, he's pumping up Craig Paquette, and now he's pumping up Brad Osmus. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Dan. And Eric says, for the Ford, Eric is the stand-up YouTuber. Eric, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Camille's going to be getting a nice Whitey Ford tonight. Um, how about this? Maybe I'll even show you in our next video the Whitey Ford that I select to send to her. And... Um, because uh, I feel like you guys have already paid 20 of that, and I want to pay some of that as well. Brian says, another five for Whitey. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that, Brian. 
All right, so here we go. Our next spot, we have spot number 18. This is for Avery. So Avery McGuire. It is going to Avery in spot number 18. Match the numbers up there. Let's see what we can find for you. Clint says you could probably get a mantle now with all the donations. I think a Mickey Mantle card, typically the mantles in... Um, in poor condition, mantles are usually worth at least a hundred bucks. Um, in the VG condition, like this set's a v, uh, VG three condition, they're probably around two hundred dollars raw or so. Eighteen, eighteen, Avery. Here we go. All right, we start off with Wally Post from the Phillies leading things off. Uh, Heather, no, I missed a mess of things. Sorry about that. I was looking down. A mess of things says Heather. Bye now. They'll be gone in an hour. Thank you very much. A mess of things. Um, Heather, if you want to buy a PSA 5 and send it directly to Camille, you don't have her address, though. It's in my Patreon page. We'll get that purchased whenever we get over there. There's Jim Coates, New York Yankees card. Thank you very much for that. A mess of things. I hope you will check his channel out. I sent you lots of packs, man, for your minute rips. Um, Johnny Cux from the uh, Athletics. And then there's a Dutch Duderer. What is with some of these names tonight? Some of these names are, are just crazy. There's Pete Daly. That's an easy one. Rick Aguirre. We have a Lenny Green. Getting to the Hall of Famer coming up. There's Ted Abernathy. How about a Lee May? And the Hall of Famer is going to be Brooks Robinson, who won 16 Gold Glove Awards. And a lot of people consider the Robinson or, or Brooks Robinson to be one of the best fielding third basemen of all time. So I'm going to collect with an upside down smiley face. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, Brooks Robinson going to Avery. Nice card right there. His rookie card, if I remember correctly, is 1957 top. So a nice early Brooks Robinson card for Avery as we continue through the 1960 tops break. Let, yeah, lots of people love Brooks. Avery says, thanks, my first break. Well, thank you very much for being here, Avery. I really appreciate that. Hopefully you enjoy these cards. All right, spot number 19, it's for Ramiz. Let's see what we can find for you, Ramiz, in spot number 19. Human vacuum cleaner over there at the hot corner for sure. Brooks Robinson could get everything. All right, so, uh, yeah, Craig Nels had a great glove as well. 1919, match him up. It's for Ramiz. A mess of things says, might be a lot of guys who came over after the war. A mess of things, thank you very much. And Tommy says, pretty soon we'll be able to get a PSA 10 for it. Tommy, thank you very much. Um, Camille, is the Yankees your PC? Do, I'm, I feel like you, if I'm not mistaken, from Heather handles all the shipping, but I'm pretty sure you're in the New York area, maybe New Jersey, somewhere around there. I, sometimes I see some of those labels when I take them to the post office, but that's pretty awesome um, that you were able to get that Ford uh, in a roundabout way, by my mistake, but I'm glad that you're getting There's Bill Rigney, manager, card. Danny McDevitt is a nice card right there. There is a Jim Brosnan, Cincinnati Reds pitcher, getting down to the rookie card. Or not the rookie card, but the Hall of Famer. We do have a rookie card here. Frank Herrera, 1960 rookie star. The Killebrew has already pulled the Grim Ripper. We already saw Killebrew. You can kind of get an idea of what's coming up here if you've been here the entire time. we got a Gold Cup card coming up. It's Pumpsy Green. I just love these old names. Pumpsy Green. All-star second baseman. He got the gold cup. Had the best rookie season for second baseman. We got Bobby Richardson from the New York Yankees. My dad used to like him a lot. And your Hall of Famer. It is early win from the Chicago White Sox. Early win. Long-term pitcher. Long-time pitcher right there. Um, and they don't grade this card. Look at the back. I was looking to see if it was a VG4, VG3, how they graded that one up. But Ramiz, thank you very much. Bobby Richardson, pretty good card. I know people like him a lot, especially Yankees fans. My dad grew up. That was one of his favorite players. All right, our next pack up. Let's see. It is spot number 20. Spot number 20 corresponds to Scott. Scott, best of luck to you. Let's see what we can find here in spot number 20. All right, so, yeah, early win. Hall of Famer. Some of these guys are kind of the lesser-known Hall of Famers. Alan says, first break with you. This is a really fun idea. Thanks, Eric. Alan, thank you very much. I just, uh, I was racking my brain of how can I go earlier than 1978? I haven't opened anything earlier than 1978 tops. And I, I've tried. I've tried to get 1977 tops. It's like $7,000 a box. I think I even offered them $5,000 and they turned me down. 
Uh, let's see here. There's a Bill Harris. We have a Jerry Davey and a Don Dillard or Don Dillard from the Cleveland Indians, 1960 rookie star. Still looking for Yastrzemski's card. Al Lopez, Art Dittmar from the Yankees. We have another Yankees card, Bobby Shantz. We're getting down to the no autographs in this, but we're getting down to the Hall of Famer card. It's Don Budden is hiding the Hall of Famer. It is Eddie Matthews. Eddie Matthews, Hall of Famer from the Milwaukee Braves. He also had 512 career home runs tied up with Ernie Banks on the all-time home run list. And that's one of, I believe, two Eddie Matthews cards in here. We're still looking for his base card. Nice 1960. I believe the all-star cards were at the end of the set. Uh, it goes to 572, so the last... Oh, I don't know, 20, 30 or so cards are all-star cards. Yeah, we're still looking for Willie McCovey as well. So Eddie Matthews, at least his all-star card has been found. And by the way, Mickey Mantle has an all-star card in here as well. So keep an eye out for him as we pull our next pack. This pack number 21 is for Anthony Mega. Let's see what we can find for you, hopefully, it is a mega hit. If you had a channel, Anthony, you would have a really easy time coming up with a channel name. Mega Hits is what I would call it. Open up some cards. It just seems uh, fitting. But anyway, here we go. There's the 1960 wrapper. Took me a little while to find that, but I got it sized up to fit the cards. I really like uh, kind of how that looks. Almost feels like I'm opening a real pack. There's a Willie Kirkland card right there. Then we have a George Ace Miranda card. We've got Jim Rivera, Chicago White Sox car. We have Ryan Duran, spells his name just like um, Sandberg, like that one a lot. And uh, we have a Ted Bowsfield, Boston Red Sox card. We have St. Louis Cardinals team card right there. Neil Steele's second in the 59 World Series. Looks like that was a blowout game. The White Sox won game one, 11 to nothing. And then they would go on to lose the World Series in six games. Joe DiMaggio is unfortunately not in this set. Washington Senators coach card. We have a Tito Francona, father of Terry Francona. And the Hall of Famer is Luis Aparicio, all-star game card. So Luis Aparicio also has three cards in the 1960 set. He's got a World Series card. He's got the base card, and he's got the 1960 All-Star Game card. So I think that is the end of Aparicio's. And uh, moving ahead now, spot number 21 should have been Roberto Clemente. But here we go. 22 is for Joseph Rice, and I'm pretty sure he's in here. JoJo, best of luck to you. Spot 22. Match him up. And let's get to uh, opening these bad boys and let's see what we can find. All right, so this uh, pack doesn't want to come up. And there we go. All right, so we start things off with a Chuck Tanner, who was a very legendary manager for the Buccos, led them to their last World Series in 1979. Lindy McDaniel from the St. Louis Cardinals. We have a Bob Maybe or Bob Mabe from the Orioles. Rip Coleman. Just got to love the names from these 1960 players. I've seen some that I haven't even been able to say because I felt like they're uh, borderline. There's Ray Moore getting gray, Ray Moore. And we got a Steve Barber. Then there's a Sherm Lawler, who I believe won the gold glove in 1960. 1959, the champs celebrate. The Dodgers beat the White Sox. The World or not the World Series, the... Hall of Fame card, it's going to be Casey Stengel. Legendary manager for the New York Yankees. Hall of Famer Casey Stengel is the Hall of Famer in spot number 22 for Joseph. And now that takes us to spot number 23. Stan Musial still out there. Koufax is still out there. Mantle's still out there. And McCovey are all still out there. And um, I personally put them into these packs and then Heather put the, these numbers in there. So they are coming up guaranteed. Um, I guarantee it or um, your money back. They're coming up for sure. I see kid. Here we go. Yes. The mantle is in this break. He's got three cards in the set. We haven't found one yet. Maybe spot number 23 will produce the Mickey man. At least one of them. I see kid cards. Let's see what we can find for you. Hank Bauer leads things off. For the, and Johnny Padres. So two pretty good players from this era. We've got a Willie Jones. 
Cincinnati Red Cards. San Francisco Giants for you Giants fans out there. There's a Mike Garcia from the White Sox. Bob Neiman, Al Dark, and uh, yeah, Hank Aaron is in this set. He's in these packs somewhere. Steve Bilko, here comes the Hall of Famer after Dave Philly. It is Cincy Clouters. Do you see the Hall of Famer? It's Frank Robinson right there in the middle. Frank Robinson is your Hall of Famer. I believe he has two or three cards in this set. Hall of Famer, Frank Robinson. They gave that one a two for I C Kid. Frank Robinson, of course, passed away, unfortunately, in, what was it, February of uh, last year. Um, awesome, awesome hitter. Amazing hitter, actually, and uh, a heck of a manager as well. Next up in spot number 24, this is for Chad. Best of luck to you, Chad. Let's see what we can find in spot 24. Still looking for Mantle. The corners are rounded up pretty much on most of the cards, Robert. That's why this, we call this a VG3 set. Um, here we go. Every card was hand graded by the uh, company I bought it off of, Dean's. There's Vern Law, who won the Cy Young Award in 1960. Back in 1960, there was only one Cy Young Award winner for all of baseball. There was no one in the AL, one in the NL, and it was Vern Law. We have a Carl Ferrio, then Hal Griggs. Don McMahon is coming up next. Sam Jones. John's calling spot number 44 for the McCovey. There's Jim Marshall. We have a Dodger backstop card there. Or, uh, yeah, backstops. They're catchers. You got the starter and the uh, backup there, which is kind of cool, I guess. Bill Monbouquet from the Boston Red Sox. Never heard of him either. We got a Bob Anderson and Johnny Briggs. Hall of Fame card coming up. It, we got a Mickey Mantle. Our first Mickey Mantle card in spot number 24 goes to Chad. Actually, now that I think about it, I think I might have seen four Mickey Mantles that I placed in here. Rival All-Stars card. Um, he uh, Maybe there's th three or four. I can't remember exactly, but very nice one right there. Our first Mickey Mantle. I was wondering when he was going to show up. Chad, you get our first Mickey Mantle. Mantle and Cleet Boyer did not like each other, and they rate that one at a three. Nice one right there. The Mick for Chad, our first Mickey of three of them from this set. 1960 Tops. Love the design of these. And Chad, you have the first Mantle of the set break. Congratulations on that. Spot number 24. Next up in spot number 25, this is for Tony D. Let's see what we can find for you. Uh, John says, Mantle is great, but Maze is better. Statistically wise, uh, you may be able to make a pretty strong argument for that. Is Maze 660 career home runs, Mantle 536. Um, I think it uh, would have been pretty darn interesting if Mantle would have stayed healthy his entire career. Of course, he had some off-the-field demons and stuff that he dealt with. There's Roy Face. Lights out reliever for the Pirates. We got Mike Lee. Gus Triandis, Baltimore Orioles card. Al Spangler. There's a wave of cards. Says, what's up, Eric? Great break. This is a great idea. How about we do 87 opening day like this? The Bonds Johnny Ray Eric card has been super hot. Yeah, the only problem is how do we uh, make sure that we find that card? Uh, I guess I could buy the set with the card in there. We could just do another set break like this. There's Joe Shipley. Stan Williams. Uh, we have a Bob Lillis, and then there's an L.A. Dodgers manager and coach card, Billy Hoft from the Baltimore Orioles. Hey, there's the 1960 most valuable player right there, Dick Grote. And the Hall of Famer is going to be Hoyt Wilhelm, who is a Hall of Famer, and he is on there with Roy Face. Fork and Knuckler, Wilhelm is the Hall of Famer. They give that one a VG3 for Tony G. So, Tony, Tony, thank you very much, and I think that you have another spot in here, so we'll see if maybe you'll get uh, Mantle, Maze, Banks still out there, Stan the Man, Musial out there, and we have yet to find any of the good rookie cards. Well, there's two major rookies in this set. We found a lot of the rookies, but the main, main ones that we're after are Willie McCovey and Carl Yastrzemski. Here we go. Next up, spot 26. This is for 357 MAGA in spot number 26. Let's see what we can find for you. There's your number. Match them up, 26, 26. Manuel, you are in the on-deck circle. I'm going to give myself a little more space here and just move these to the top of the screen. There we go. 
All right, so here we go for 357 MAGA. Ralph Terry leads things off. Jim Umbricht and then Frank House. William Howell's it going. There's Cletus Boyer, so you're going to Cleet Boyer. Couple Yankees so far. Cincinnati Reds coaches card. There's Ken Boyer. We have Charlie Lau from the Braves. Barry Chatrone, and here comes the hit. It is going to be Nellie Fox, Hall of Famer Nellie Fox. That's our second Nellie Fox. I think that might be it for Fox cards in here. We found his base card early in the break, and now that is our second Nellie Fox. It's his all-star game card. He was a lights-out second baseman back in the day for the White Sox for many years. They have the Mendoza line. They should call 300 maybe the Fox line. is. Um, he would always hit around 300 every single year. All right, next pack up after 26. Right there, 27 on my randomization lift list. That is for Manuel. Best of luck to you, Manuel. Still hunting the Mickey Mantle base card. Hank Aaron base, Ernie Banks, and so on. Let's see what we can find now in spot number 27. Yep, we are halfway through the break. So, Heather, looks like you're going to be right on. Uh, Heather predicted a two-hour break. There's Joe Nuxall, youngest player ever to pitch in a major league game. He was only 15 years old for his major league debut, which is pretty crazy. Stu Miller. We did find Ernie Banks already, but I believe it was his all-star card. So there's another Banks coming up. There's Tony Taylor. Let's get right to and see who the Hall of Famer is. There's Joe DeMastri, Jimmy Dykes, and the Hall of Famer. It's a Yankee. It is Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra, <laughs> who was famous for those yogiisms. So let's go ahead and list our favorite yogiisms. How about when you come to a fork in the road, take it? <laughs> That's one of them that, uh, that always stuck with me. Yogi Berra. Tell me your favorite Yogi saying. He had a lot of good ones. The game is 90% mental and uh, like 50% physical or something like that. Another one. Yogi Bear for Manuel. Congratulations on that one. And they rate that one as a VG3. Nice color on that one. Yogi Bear. The future ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Devlin says, that place is so busy, nobody goes there anymore. <laughs> Yogi Bear had all these funny uh, sayings. It's deja vu all over again. And a nickel ain't worth a dime anymore. Uh, lots of great ones. It got late early tonight. Some great yogiisms. Thanks for reminding me of all those. I've forgotten some of those. Here's our next one. Spot number 28. Yogi Berra is off the board. This one is for Stephen, a.k.a. Andy Savala. Let's see what we can find for you guys. It ain't over till it's over. Yeah, that should be that. I think feel like that's his most popular one. Heather's got one. Says, you can observe a lot. Just by watching the yogiism. So many good ones. Um, thanks for reminding me of all those. And here we go. <laughs> Yogi Berra said Radiohead is my favorite band. Did he really say that? All right. So I think the last time we saw Yogi Berra on a Topps card, by the way, that I can remember in a regular issue set was 1987 Topps. Don Newcomb, nice card right there. Yogi Berra was featured on the Astros team card. He was out there. He was a coach out there standing on the mound. Last time we saw him in a regular issue top. So there's Hal Smith. You got the Yankees coaches card there. Pretty cool. Chicago Cubs team card. Baseball card extravaganza. Says, I'm not in a slump. I'm just not hitting. Another yogiism. Love it. Uh, he probably has dozens of those. I'm not in a slump. I'm just not hitting. Chuck Dreston. Ken Hamlin. We have a an, another Roger Maris. Our second Roger Maris. That's his all-star card right there. Uh, as you know, we already found his base card. And he's not a Hall of Famer, so he's not the Hall of Fame hit in this pack. It's going to be Hoyt Wilhelm. So for me, Stephen and Andy, I'd be happy with the Roger Maris. I think he might get in the Hall of Fame someday. Hoyt Wilhelm, no disrespect to him. Fabulous pitcher uh, for a long time. And um, Hall of Famer, can't take that away. And by the way, they gave that one a four, one of the higher grades from this set. So Stephen and Andy, thank you very much. Let's move ahead now. There's baseball card extravaganza's link, and Adam says Hoyt pitched everywhere, but he had terrible teeth. Um, I don't know much about his his uh, dental hygiene, but I do know that he is a Hall of Famer. 
Spot number 29, looking at my list, this is for Ramiz. So Ramiz, here is your second spot. Best of luck to you. We're getting down towards the end of it, and uh, still a lot of good Hall of Famers hiding out here. We've yet to pull, we have pulled one mantle, but we haven't pulled the base. Still looking for um, Hank Aaron, Roberto Clemente, Bill Scourin. Nice one right there. We have Johnny Temple. There's a Solly Hemis. From the Cardinals, Jerry Casal, Red Sox pitcher, Hal Smith. Bobby Malcomus looks pretty darn happy in his card right there. Cleveland Indians team card, Dave Hillman. Smokey Burgess coming up next. My dad had this card as well. Former backstop for the Buccos, the World Series champion Buccos. We have a Lee Walls and the hit. You can probably see who it is already. Don Drysdale. Uh, second time pulling Don Drysdale. We pulled his all-star card. And now we have his base card. Darn clear, good color on that one. They don't rate that one, unfortunately, but it looks in really good shape right there for me. So Don Drysdale, Fairyland says Don Drysdale heart emoji. A lot of people liked him, had a great career and a great broadcasting career as well. Jack says, I'm late. What's the best card you've got yet? Um, we've pulled Harmon Killebrew already. We pulled Mantle all or not Mantle All-Star. We pulled the Mantle... Um, uh, Rivals card already. We pulled Willie Mays All Star card. Here we go. Spot number thirty. This is for Brian Z. Let's see what we can find for Brian in spot number thirty. Ken says I have a nineteen sixty Hank Aaron All Star card. I love it. Well, maybe that'll be coming up right now in spot number thirty for Brian. Jack is on deck. Let's see what we can find for Brian and then Jack. So we have a New York Yankees team card. Leading things off. Mickey Mantle's in there somewhere. Sandy Amaros from the Tigers is the next one. Jay Hook, there's a Roy Seavers, Washington Senators card. Neil Betts, second home run of the 59 World Series. L.A. narrowly winning game two, as you recall, game one. They won 11 to nothing in a blowout. Of course, the Dodgers would go on to win in six. Johnny Klipstein, Dale Long, and then we have a Pittsburgh Pirates team card. That's pretty cool. Um, you got the Yankees and Pirates in the same pack. These were the two teams that faced off against each other in the 1960 World Series. Everybody thought the Yankees were going to absolutely destroy the Pirates. It was a mismatch, but the Pirates won in seven. There's Wes Stock on Bill Mazeroski's home run. Hector Lopez, here comes the hit. It is Eddie Matthews' base card. Our second time seeing Matthews. We pulled his all-star card already. Now we have the base Matthews. 512 career home runs, and it rates out to a three for Brian. So, Brian, congratulations. Technically, Fairyland, yeah, Mickey Mantle is on that Yankees team card. So, Brian, you also got a mantle as well, I guess, in a roundabout way. Connor, I'm not sure. I didn't check the likes, but we have 290 likes right now. Thank you, everybody, that just hit that like button. I really appreciate that. If you guys like this idea, I was thinking, should I open 1992 Fleer today or... Should I do something different? I was like, well, I haven't done 94 Fleer yet on the channel, but I kind of feel like going older, so I came up with this idea. And uh, hopefully you guys like it. If you do, we'll start. We'll do 50s sets. We'll do late 60s, early 70s. You know, the stuff that you can't get in boxes anymore. Jack, you're up right now in spot number 31. Let's see what we can find for you. All right, here we go. We lead things off with a Young Hill Stars from the Baltimore Orioles. Then there's an Earl Batty from the Chicago White Sox. Jack Sanford. We have a Ken Johnson, Kansas City Royals card. Uh, 1952 repacks would be like $5,000 a pack. I'll tell you what, if you guys really like this, eventually... I'm not sure what a 1952 top set would go for. It's probably going to be at least, what, 25 grand? Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be $5,000 a pack, but it, it would be up there uh, going after a Mickey Mantle. And, of course, to make sure we don't get a fake, I would buy a PSA mantle to put into that break as well. Mini Mimoso, nice one right there. We have a, an Athletics, Kansas City Athletics card. There's a Harvey Coon. We have an autograph. No, no, I'm so used to saying autographs from opening stuff like this all the time, which um, we're going to be doing an encore break of that. I, I bought two more cases of that today. Hopefully, we can do that on Sunday. The Hall of Famer is Willie Mays, our second Willie Mays Master and Mentor card. I believe Willie Mays has three cards in this set as well. Jay Bob and Sons is awesome personal break idea. Well done, Jabs. Jay Bob and Sons, thank you very much. 
I really appreciate that. I hope that you will check out J. Bob and Sons. Willie Mays, they give that one a two because of the crease in the upper left corner, which you can kind of see there. For Jack, though, a Willie Mays car. Congratulations on that one. The Say Hey Kid, Willie Mays, one of the best catches of all time with that over-the-shoulder running catch. You guys have all seen that one probably many times and probably also tried to replicate that in your backyard. I know that I, whenever I had a chance of a uh, ball that was kind of like dying, fading right over my head, I would always run back and try to catch it like the Say Hey Kid. All right, here we go. Spot number 32. The randomizer assigned this one to Brian. We did that randomizer right at the outset of this video. Put all the packs on the screen, randomized them up, and here we go. Brian, let's see what we can find for you in spot number 32. On deck is Pablo in spot 33, and then after that, it's Matt. All right, so our remaining stack is getting a little bit smaller now. We are on the downside end of the break. There's Lou Johnson. Chico Fernandez. It's a good shot at seeing every single car in the set, though, which is pretty nice. We have a Dan Dobick, Washington Senators card. There's an Ellis Burton from the St. Louis Cardinals. We got Vic Wirtz. Gold Cup card coming up. Johnny Romano won the Gold Cup for the best all-around rookie at the catcher position. How much was the spot? $64, I think. There's Ken Hunt from the New York Yankees. There's Felipe Alou, the father of Moise Salou and former Expos manager. You may remember that. There's Ted Lapicio. And there it is, Carl Yastrzemski rookie card. So, Brian, you have the first of two major rookies. A little bit of a print issue on there. Probably going to be... There's no creases at all on it. They give that one. They didn't give that one a grade. I'd probably give that one maybe a two because of the black dots on it. But it's still a nice card right there. Carl Yastrzemski. We're also looking for Willie McCovey's rookie card. The corners on this one are looking pretty darn good. Check out those corners. No creases. Nice card for Brian. So, yes, Stremski is the first one. Um, Adam says Yaz played till he was like 95. You may remember, I think the last time we saw you, Stremski was at 82 tops. He looked like a really old man on those cards. Uh, that is ink, I believe, on the card, unfortunately. Um, Fairyland says, I would take it. Nice card. Brian, congrats on the Yastrzemski rookie card. And here we go. Next up, it's spot number 33. That one is going to Pablo Iglesias. So, Pablo, best of luck to you in 33. 84 Fleer was his last card. 83 tops his last. Tops card, Mike Yastrzemski is doing very well. Pablo, here we go in spot 33. Let's see what we can find for you. Saf says, how much was a spot in this? It was, what, $64 free shipping. Uh, Herb Score leads things off. That's a name that a lot of Indians fans will recognize. Norm Larker. We got a Bob Bruce, 1960. Del Crandall. Come on, let's find the mantle now soon. Jim Lemon. There is a Richard Stigman. Bob Elliott looking really Really, I don't know, I don't want to call him creepy, but uh, really happy right there. Athletics team manager, Kansas City Athletics. We have a Johnny Blanchard card. There is Billy Kloss. Here comes the Hall of Fame hit. There it is, Mickey Mantle All-Star card. Pablo with the mantle. So that leaves one more Mickey Mantle hiding out in this set break. That'll be the base card. Very nice. Check that one out. Mickey Mantle, 1960 All-Star card. Uh, check out the back of the card right there. Let's show you the whole thing. There it is, Mickey Mantle, card number 563. Nice-looking card for Pablo, our second Mickey Mantle. The first one, he had to share the card with um, Cleet Boyer. Steve says, what a card. Yep, definitely. A, I love that card. Uh, all right, so here we go. Next spot up, spot number 34. This one's going to Matt, and in spot number 35, we have David. So, Matt, best of luck to you. Put your name and a couple letters from your last name there to help me locate your PayPal payment so I can get these easily sent out to you. 34-34, here we go. JS has a PSA 6 Carlton for sale. It depends on what year it is, though, of course. All right, so we have a Fred Green leading things off. Then we have Larry Sherry. Kind of an uh, interesting card. Those letters look like they're not lined up very well. The L's, like the white letters, were slightly lower than the black letters. There's Don Demeter. We have Carl Mathias. 
A PSA 552 Mantle is a $46,000 card. Hey, there's Frank Torrey. That is the brother of Joe Torrey. Nice looking card right there. Brooks Lawrence, Al Grunewald. Here comes the Hall of Famer. It is going to be from the Pirates. No, it's not from the Pirates. It's Hank Aaron, all-star card. So Hank Aaron, the base card is still hiding out in here somewhere. But now we've located the all-star card. Every single card from the 1960 top set is in this break tonight. Beautiful looking Hank Aaron card for Matt. Congratulations on that one. I'm obsessed collector says, I was off by one pack. Wow. How much was this break? It was uh, $64 a spot, free shipping. Uh, that's uh, I thought that was pretty darn good. for like, Otherwise, it would be like, I don't know, $2,000 a pack if we were doing real packs. And then you would, you know, most of the time come away with all commons because you only had five cards per pack back then. And uh, there are no packs. So there's literally no way. You could try to find packs. I mean, I tried to find them and see what they're going for just to kind of like say, yeah, if you bought a real box, this is how much. I couldn't find a single listing or sold listing on eBay of any 1960 authentic authentic packs or boxes. Uh, I mean, a wrapper is like 90 bucks. But here we go. Elliot Breaks, welcome back. David, let's see what we can find for you in spot number 35. Pack 35. Start off with Del Crandall. All-star card. Rob says, this is really cool. Good stuff. Thanks, man. Jim Owens. We've got a Joe Morgan. That's not the Hall of Famer. Of course, Joe Morgan uh, from the Big Red Machine would come along a little bit later. There's Fred Kipp. Leon Wagner, St. Louis Cardinals card. Rick says, we're about due for Koufax or Gibson. Larry Osborne. we got the Braves coach card right there. There's Billy Gardner. Joe Gordon and Marv Throneberry. Here comes the hit. St. Louis Cardinals. Bob Gibson, Stan Musial. Who is it going to be? It's Stan the Man Musial. How about that one? Congratulations, David, on Stan Musial. There's the man right there. Very nice card, Stan Musial. BBC has 1952 packs, says Doubter. Yeah, um, they do have a like eight packs, it's like an eight pack brick, and it's I think it's like five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars for eight packs, <laughs> which is like forty cards, and literally no guarantee of getting the mantle. Now, if you do find a Mickey Mantle and it's like a PSA ten, that card is worth over two million dollars. Um, I believe the last PSA ten mantle that sold was like was it two point nine million or something like that. It was way high, uh, almost approaching Hannes Wagner territory. Anyway, here we go. Spot number 36 is for Brad Bender, and then 37 is for Mr. Alan Pavick. So we'll get your cards ready to go, and then let's get to ripping these. Brad, best of luck to you in spot number 36. Classic Pack Breaks has one pack, and it's $4,250, and it came from the BBC uh, years ago. That's crazy. So... Uh, for a pack of five cards, it's like $1,000 a card almost for 1960 tops. This is a much more affordable way to uh, see all the cards and still get the cards and kind of like the same feel of opening the packs. 36, Brad. Here we go. Let's see what we can find for you. We have a Joe. Uh, I'm not even going to try to say because I don't want to butcher the name. Bob Keegan. Wes Covington looks a little bit off center. Sam White from the Boston Red Sox. we got Mel Roach. There's Kurt Flood. St. Louis Cardinals fans recognize him for sure. Card breaker, shout out to your brother. Ned Garver, there's a Bill Verdon, former coach for the Buccos there. San Francisco Giants card. Looks like they had a little bit of an issue with the uh, Photoshop there. These guys, they could have done a little bit better job. Looks like Parker and Posdell are missing portions of their body. Uh, Parker's missing part of his head. Elmer Vallow, here's the Hall of Famer. It is... From the Tigers, Al Kaline. Al Kaline, who unfortunately passed away, I believe it was earlier this year, um, and he was the man for TTMs. He was like uh, the guy. Send him 10 bucks and a card, and he would sign it and send it back to you. A very nice one right there. Al Kaline for Brad. So, Brad, congratulations on that one. Mr. Al Kaline. And now at spot number 37, we're going to have Alan Pavick. Tony says, I remember those Bowman from the 40s. They were worth big money in Beckett. And the Flint says, I got his autograph on a 1963 top score. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, K-Line would sign for anybody. Send him a little bit of money, of course, because 
if he just signed for free, then everybody would be sending in his stuff to, you know, sending him cards that they would just sell and flood the market with. So I think that's fair. A lot of the Hall of Famers charge a small fee for their autograph, some more than others. Uh, here we go. So, Allen, spot number 37. Let's see what we got for you. There's a Bobby Del Greco leading things off with Bill Tuttle from the KC Athletics. We've got Jack Harshman from the Indians. Best signer right now is Pat Neshek. Yeah, Neshek loves baseball cards. So, uh, Pat, if you're watching right now, um, much respect to you. Baltimore Orioles. We've got a Don Elston card from the Chicago Cubs. Danny Murtaugh. Pirates manager there from the champion 1960 Buccos. Getting to the Hall of Famer, it's going to be hidden by Don Gross. And the Hall of Famer is Willie McCovey rookie card for Allen. So Allen with a big hit right there. He gets the gold cup, and that is his rookie card. Hall of Famer Willie McCovey. And McCovey Cove is named after McCovey, as pretty much all of you know right there. So we found the Yastrzemski. Now we found the Willie McCovey rookie card, and it goes to Allen in spot number 37. Antonio said that he called it, and uh, we are just we have more cards in here to go. We still have Ernie Banks, we still have Roberto Clemente. Uh, what else do we have? Mickey Mantle base cards as well. So Willie McCovey, they gave that one a VG3. Allen, congratulations on the rookie card of Willie McCovey. Very nice one right there. So next up, missing, unfortunately, by one spot. Number 38, that is Benjamin Gore. Let's see what we can find for you. Missed McCovey by one, but we will see what we have in store. And then on deck, that's going to be Philip Pewart. Best of luck to you in the on deck circle. Another Hollis build says, I'm almost at 110. Appreciate the subs. Uh, love and peace. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed to the Hollis build already, uh, he streaked past 100 subscribers last night. Help him get to 110, everybody. We've got over 800 people in here. If you'd like to click on the link that pops up from Daddy Daughter or Heather, check their channel out real quick, or just drop us up and then check it out later. And here we go. There's Daddy Daughter with the link. Thank you very much, Daddy Daughter. Benjamin, here we go. We have a Bud Byerly. Then there is a Julio Becker. Detroit Tigers card right there with K-Line somewhere in there. Rick, yeah, if you've been watching the whole time, we haven't found Koufax or Gibson yet either. There's a Johnny Callison. Ken Aspermonte, all-star card of Joe Cunningham. And there is a Bob Will 1960 rookie card. And here comes the hit. Hall of Famer, it's going to be after the Johnny Antonelli, and it is... Warren Spawn, Mound Magicians. Warren Spawn in the middle right there. You can see the Hall of Fame designation for Spawn for Benjamin. Warren Spawn, one heck of a pitcher. All you Braves fans know all about him. Everybody knows about Warren Spawn if you were collecting cards in the 80s because you may remember the 1989 Don Ross puzzle that we all put together like seven or eight times of Warren Spawn. With those puzzle pieces in 89 Donruss, I know I put together a lot of that puzzle. All right, so here we go. Spot number 39 is for Philip, and spot number 40 is going to be for Keith Madrigal. You're in the on-deck circle. Only about a dozen packs left to go. And uh, let's get this one to open up. So there should be some big names in here. Uh, there will be some big names in here. If we haven't seen them yet, they are coming. Trust me, this is a complete set. So we have Richard Hall leading things off. Then there's Russ Snyder, a rookie card of Bob Hartman. Walt Droppo from the Orioles. And then there's a Mike Fornelis, I guess. I probably butchered that name. Frank Sullivan. Ron Samford for you Senators fans out there. Kent Hadley. We've got a Rocky Bridges shortstop card. All-star card incoming. It is Charlie Neal. And what is with that background? Uh, they didn't do this on any other card, but it looks like they maybe his head was off-centered, so they just literally cut it out and dragged it over and <laughs> didn't even bother to fix the background. Pretty interesting right there. Charlie Neal, have not seen that on any other 1960 All-Star card. And the Hall of Fame hit, it is a pitcher, Gibson, Koufax. It's Robin Roberts from the Philadelphia Phillies, Robin Roberts is the last one. Gary, yeah, I I have a, I bought a complete set of 1960 Tops, and then 
uh, took out all 52 Hall of Fame cards and uh, made 52 packs. As you see, they made it easy on me, put Hall of Fame in all of them. Of course, a lot of those guys are pretty easy to identify as Hall of Famers, but Philip, thank you very much. And now we have the last dozen packs. John V says, Jabs with another awesome break. Thank you, John V. I really appreciate that. I hope you guys will check out John's channel. Thank you very much for your support and being here tonight. Thank you, everybody, for checking in tonight. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this 1960 Tops break. Maybe getting a little more accustomed to this set that can sometimes be forgotten by a lot of us modern collectors. The 1960 Tops set, if you haven't seen it in a while, it is a beauty. And this is the 60th anniversary of the set this year, so I figured it would be appropriate to begin our um, set breaks. If, the, if you guys want me to continue this as a regular throwback series, um, 60 would be a good one to start with. There's Elio Chacon. Then we have Jim O'Toole, who got the Gold Cup for Rookie Pitcher. We got Johnny Antonelli from the San Francisco Giants. There's still one mantle left in here somewhere, Robert. We have a Milwaukee Braves card right there. Clint Courtney, I could see the wheels turn. Robert's got spot 52. He's like, all right, I've got a 1 in, what, 12 chance of getting a mantle. Ray Herbert right there. There's a Tommy Davis. Here comes the Hall of Famer. Gil Hodges, not a Hall of Famer, but a pretty darn good player. Gil Hodges, a great card right there. And the Hall of Famer, it's Nellie Fox. I thought we were done with Nellie Fox, but we have one more. Nellie Fox must have had four cards in this set. There he is one more time. Um, pretty interesting card right there. Looking at a ball with Harvey Kuhn, it looks like. So, Keith, that is your pack in the books. Let me go ahead and repackage it all up. I'm putting back in, like, I'm putting your wrapper back in just in case you want that. I mean, it cost me a lot of ink to make those, so I'm not just going to throw them away. Had to burn through a bunch of yellow toner making these bad boys. So might as well um, have some of you may appreciate them or keep them. Tony's up again. Tony D. Let's see what we can find for you. He was in here earlier. And here we go. Spot number 41. There it is. Pizza says, I sold my 1960 top sets for $14,000 last summer. And all of them were PSA 7s and up. That's pretty awesome, man. Yeah, that's a great set. All right, so here we go. We have Ernie Broglio leading things off. Ken Walters. Tony, you got a good shot. Frank Bominow, I think that should be a 1 with that crease. But I think they gave this a 2. When I was looking at this, when I made these up, I was like, come on. George Altman. But a lot of the grades are pretty darn close to what I would give them. There's Bill Scowron. We got a Philadelphia Phillies team card. The Flint says Broglie was traded for Lou Brock. Did not know that. You may remember Lou Brock in his rookie card. He's featured in a Cubs uniform. 1962 tops. Jerry Walker. Here comes the Hall of Famer. It is Hank Aaron. There he is. Tony G. Not a very good pack the first time. I can't remember who you got in your first pack, but I think it wasn't a, a great um, player. But you have a nice Hank Aaron right now. We're waiting for Hammer and Hank's base card, and you got him, Tony. Congratulations in spot number 41. Hank Aaron, the uh, all-time home run king until Barry Bonds surpassed him in 2007. Of course, Hank Aaron, 755 career home runs. That's the number we all grew up memorizing as the uh, all-time home run record. And Tony G has that. Obsessed Collector says Aaron is the true home run king. Nice card right there. Take a look at that one. Let's check out the back. They gave it a VG3. For those of you that like to see the backs of the cards, uh, I'll take a second to show you the Aaron. Card number 300. Tops always used to kind of uh, give a little extra bonus to the best players by giving them a nice numbered card, like 100, 200, 300, 400. They would give those to the best players uh, from each year. And Hank Aaron got card number 300. Nice one right there. Tony, you got to be happy with that one. That one is going to be sent out to you tomorrow. I know that I got your message asking me to hold your Patreon monthly package back until um, you uh, get to have this break in there as well. So that'll go out tomorrow. Yeah, the corners are nice on that one. Off center, though, a little bit. But who cares about that? It's a Hank Aaron beautiful-looking card right now. And here we go. Now, next up, still looking for Mantle, his base card, and Roberto Clemente. Uh, who else is still out there? Uh, Sandy Koufax. Daniel's got a shot right now in spot number 42 and in the on deck circle in spot number 43 that's going for clem p so 
It's a couple great cards, and your odds are going up and up with every pack open. That Hank Aaron, a great hit. We were waiting for that one. All right, here we go. Spot 42. It's right there. Almost did the same thing again. I forgot that I had it on the screen. Almost pulled a uh, pulled another error. I have one error tonight. Don't want to do that again. All right, 42. Here we go. Daniel, let's see what we can find for you. Uh, Leo is calling a Clemente in this pack. We start off with a Bill Short. We already pulled all the good rookies. We already found McCovey. We already found Yastrzemski. There's John Rom Romanonski, I guess. There's Joe J. We've got a Gordy Coleman. I'm trying to show you guys all the cards, too, because people that love cards like to see, um, especially if you've never seen this set before, I'm taking like a second and showing you each card and not just shuffling through like I usually do. As, especially like if we've seen cards like 13 times a piece, I'll shuffle through them. Here we go. Hall of Famer coming up after Eli. It is Bob Gibson. How about that one, Daniel? Uh, one of the greatest seasons of all time in the modern era is 1968 season where he had a 112 earned run average. Check out the back of the Gibson. They gave that a three. Uh, this is uh, close, darn close to being his rookie card. As you see, one of the rules of thumb is if you look at the back of the card and see like uh, the stats matching the previous year, you'd always call it a rookie card. But I think his 59 was his rookie card. A great card right there for Daniel. Congratulations on that second year Gibson card. Love that one, Daniel. And now we are in spot number 43. Only a few packs left in this set. 572 total cards in the set. Clem, you're up right now. Let's see if we can find now. Almost opened this one earlier accidentally for Daniel. Let's see who would have been in there. In the on-deck circle, it's Andrew. In spot number 44. So here we go, 43. We start off with a Ray Semproch. I probably mispronounced that. Uh, sports card says, love this break. Great idea. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> just, there's no way I'm going to be able to get a box of 1960 tops. So um, I try to be creative and think of another way. There's a Faith Throneberry. There's Billy Lowe's. How about we have a Johnny Satoris? Who's guessing the Hall of Famer in this one? Um, you can kind of, if you've been watching since the beginning, you have a good idea. We have an Al Stieglitz, and the Hall of Famer is going to be. No, that's not it. It's not Sherm Lawler. He was darn good. He's a good player, all star, great catcher. But the Hall of Famer is Frank Robinson, our second Frank Robinson. We pulled his Cincinnati Reds uh, leaders card or whatever that was. Uh, where he was featured in the middle there, teaching some Reds how to hit. Now we have his base card right there. Dale says these 1960s cards are awesome. Frank Robinson, a lot of people. You're right, Heather. Good good call on that one. I didn't notice it on the other ones because the uh, the one card was just so pronounced. Frank Robinson, you guys may not remember this because Carl Yastrzemski kind of like erased it from everyone's memory, but Frank Robinson also won a triple crown. I think like a year or two before Yastrzemski. Nice one. Frank Robinson Hall of Famer for Clem. Very good pack right there. And now we are on to the next pack up. That's going to be pack number 44, which you would expect Hank Aaron to be in there. But of course, Hank Aaron wore number 44. Aaron was already pulled. I don't believe we have any more Hank Aarons in this set. And uh, here we go in spot number 44. This is for Andrew. Let's see what we can find for you. This is every card in the set, Constipated in Sin, Sin City. Every single card from the 1960s set is coming out tonight. One card of each of them. 572 cards. You take 52, multiply it by 11 cards, you get 572. That's exactly what we have. So here we go. Spot number 44. This is for Andrew. Best of luck to you. And let's see. MC says, this channel got me collecting again. Thanks, man. That really means a lot to me. Glad to have you here. And Jason says, hey, Jabs, no channel here either. I just joined the $50 tier earlier. Wanted to say thanks to you and Heather for all you do. Thank you very much, Jason. I really appreciate that. I'll I'll make a, a solid effort to get out your... I know it's the end of the month. I send those every month. If you signed up at the end of the month, um, you're going to get charged again on August 1st. They charge you the first very month, so you will still get your July package. I'll get that out tomorrow or Saturday, and um, then we'll have the August package for you as well. Hey, there's uh, CPSD. Clem says, thanks, Eric. Nice. Thank you very much for being here. 
Clem. Congratulations on the Frank Robinson as we look at pack number 44. All right, who wants to call the next Hall of Famer? If you've been watching the whole time, there's only a couple left we haven't seen. We have a Lou Clinton card right there. There's Gary Peters. Eddie Yost, Boston Red Sox coach's card. Uh, looks like Mike is calling Koufax and Obsessed Collector is calling Mantle. Scrambling after a ball. That's game six. That's the game that the Dodgers put it away. They won and clinched the World Series. Uh, game six is all they needed. The Dodgers beating the White Sox. Billy Pierce, here's the Hall of Famer. I'm seeing Clemente, Koufax, and Mantle. They're all still out there. It is Willie McCovey All-Star card. So I think that tricked everybody if you've forgotten about Willie McCovey. And now I do see the shadow on all these as well. Nice Willie McCovey. Found his rookie card already. I don't, this isn't considered a rookie since his base is the rookie, but it's from his rookie year, and it's his all-star card. A very nice one for Andrew. Uh, Willie McCovey, and they uh, here's the back of the card. Some of these uh, they did not take a look at in grade, but there's no writing on the back. It looks to be in pretty darn good shape. No creases on that one. Andrew, thank you very much. Nice McCovey. And here we go. Michael says, love the videos, but I've been getting back into the cards, and your videos have been a big part of it. Thank you very much. Glad that you are enjoying the hobby once again, like a lot of us are. And uh, Tony says, that is a four. Yeah, probably a four. I'd say a majority of the set would be the VG3s, and then there's uh, probably about 60% threes and, oh, I don't know, about 20% fours and 20% twos. 45 is for Manuel, and in the on-deck circle, it's spot number 46. That is going to be for James. Let's see what we can find for you guys. Uh, right corner of your screen. That is all we have left. Grant says, this is honestly a great set. How much is it? Well, sets depend on their value. Some of these sets sell for upwards of tens of thousands of dollars in the higher grades. Uh, this one was $64 a pack. There's Danny O'Connell. We have Juan Pizarro. Card Breakers is calling a Kofax. Silent Collector with a hamburger emoji. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. A lot of pins in right there. I hope you will check out Silent Collector, Dick Schofield. Albie Pearson from the Orioles. Then there's Norm Cash from the Detroit Tigers. Wind Savers right there. And we have another Gold Cup card. There's Daddy Daughter with the link for Silent Collector. It's a Jim Baxis card. Rookie third baseman, Gold Cup. And here comes the hit. Some of you can already see it. It is Roberto Clemente, 1960 tops. And they put Bob on the card. And uh, that really used to bother Roberto Clemente. FDC Family Cards says wait for it. Thank you very much, FDC. A lot of Topps cards uh, used to put Bob Clemente, and he really disliked that. Um, he never called himself Bob. Um, Topps explained it to him when he uh, said, no, my name is not Bob. Why are you putting that on there? And they said they could not fit Roberto and Clemente. It was too many characters, so they just did that. So uh, that always bothered Roberto and his family. They talk about that. If you ever go to the Clemente Museum, it's kind of like the Hall of Fame for Clemente. It's in Pittsburgh, and uh, they have every single Clemente card, and some of them are like PSA 9s and 10s, just like this collection. This collection is worth like $3 million or whatever. And uh, I just kind of like look at that for a long time. Roberto Clemente for Manuel. Love that card. For Manuel, congratulations on that one. As we move ahead now to spot number 46. How much were these packs? They were $64 a piece. One guaranteed Hall of Famer in every pack. 11 cards. And um, just my way of trying to think of a way to open up some 1960 tops when there are no boxes of these left. Spencer says, hey, Jabs, I'm back. Always look forward to your videos. Welcome back, and thanks for being here. It's 46 now for James. Let's see what we can find. For you, yeah, maybe they could have just put R. Clemente. Uh, maybe that would be a better solution. I'm not sure what the best solution would be. Spot 46 for James. There it is. Let's see who we have. We have Al Schroll leading things off. There's a Norm Sherry from the Dodgers. George Witt from the Buccos right there. Next up, we got Hal Brown. Nice looking card right there. Very intense looking Hal Brown. Ramon Mejias from the Buccos. 
Alex Gramas. And now we're going to be getting towards our Hall of Famer. Koufax or Mantle, says Rick. Frank Larry, if you've been here the whole time, you got a good idea who's coming up. We're still looking for Koufax, still looking for Mantle. And the hit is going to be... Ernie Banks base card. You guys forgot. We already pulled Banks, but that was his all-star card. Ernie Banks, Mr. Let's Play 2. Nice looking card right there for James in spot 46. So Mantle is still out there. Some people were calling. I saw Mantle in 48. And that one is a, one of the highest grades that we got in this set. It gave it a 4. Very nice Ernie Banks. There's the back of the card. Congratulations on the Banks, James. Love that card. Triple B says, now that's a hit. Yeah, Ernie Banks. Mantle's not coming, laugh out loud. Mantle is coming. If there's no Mantle in these packs, I'll buy a PSA-graded Mantle and I'll raffle it off evenly amongst everybody in this break because uh, guaranteed he's in this set and his base card will be appearing at some point. I remember... Look at that card myself the other day. Here's 47. This is for Norman. Norman, you have spot number 47. And in the on-deck circle in spot number 48, that's for Todd. We'll see what we can find for you. Only five packs left. Who are the last five Hall of Famers that um, we have not yet pulled? That can... Uh, you can figure it out. Actually, yeah, six Hall of Famers if you count this one. Barry Zito. Well, if this was Topps Archives Signature Series, we'd have a Barry Zito in every other pack. 47-47. Double check that. All right, here we go. Start off with Tom Borland from the Boston Red Sox. There's Joe Gibbon. Turk Lown from the Chicago White Sox. Saw him on another card earlier. I forget who, who he was with. Bill Fisher. There's a Valmy Thomas card, Don Blazing Game. Interesting name right there. Coxie says, I love watching pack openings. Reminds me of the good old simple days of collecting cards. Bob Miller, some of you guys out there may have opened some of these 1960 Tops cards in your youth when you were like, I don't know, six, seven, eight years old. Stan Lapata. There's a Zach Monroe. We have a Leo. Keeley and the Hall of Fame hit is Sandy Koufax. You called it. I saw somebody call it. Norman, congratulations. Sandy Koufax, whose career was done at the age of 30. I think his last year in the big leagues, he had like a 1.7 something run average, and they had to hang it up with arm issues. Nice looking Sandy Koufax, one of the all time greats right there. Congratulations, Norman, on that hit. Norman, great hit. And here comes 48 for Todd. As you know, these packs are a set break. So I took all the cards. I divvied them up, put one Hall of Famer down on every single pile on Heather's dining room table. And then um, went through and put all the other cards on top of them. And then uh, I team bagged them up and had Heather go through and put random numbers in every single bag. And this is what we got. You're going to see every single card tonight. Todd, you have spot number 40. A really good chance at a mantle right now as it's a 1 in 5 chance getting down towards the end. Mickey Mantle, the best card in the set. Is Tom going to have it? Uh, it's between Tom, Jack, Rich, Scott, and Robert at the end. Stan Musial was already pulled. Yeah, Sandy is still around. Luckily, there is a Richard Ellsworth card. We have a Ray Webster. Gordon Jones. How about a Ted Weand card? Billy Consolo, and here it comes. There's Bob Shaw. <laughs> Redemption card coming up. There's Jim Landis. A Clay Dalrymple. Mo Drabowski. We have a Charlie Krim. And the hit is going to be Al Kaline All-Star card. We found his base card. And now we find his regular card. Nice condition Al Kaline card. They didn't grade this one, but you can see the back is uh, the corners look pretty darn good for being in a uh, VG3 set. Great looking card right there. Al K line, Todd. Congratulations on that one. Uh, great condition. As we move ahead now to spot 49, you've got a one in four chance at the mantle. <laughs> so uh, that is between the following Jack has spot number 49. 
Rich has spot 50, Scott has spot 51, and Robert has 52. And we took all 52 names and randomized them during this break at the outset. So there would be no question as to, you know, who was assigned to whatever card has the mantle in it or whatnot. I, I, I don't know exactly which pack mantle is in here, but he's going to be in one of them. One of them. Who else is still out there, guys? Uh, mantle is still out there. Who else are we missing? There's 52 Hall of Famers in this set, and uh, each pack has a Hall of Famer. Willie Mays is still missing. That's another one. So Mantle or Mays, Jack, you have a 50-50 chance at finding a Willie Mays or a Mickey Mantle. Let's see who you find. Is Mantle going to be in this one or one of these three? Connor says this is nerve-wracking. Imagine how Jack feels right now. All right, here we go. Mays base is still out there, says Tony. Yeah, we did find two Willie Mays cards already. One was his all-star card and one was his manager card. Uh, so his base is also still lurking in one of these four packs. Tom Sturdivant from the Boston Red Sox. Sports cards 24-7. Thanks for just being here, man. All right, there's a Ben Johnson. We have a Marv Breeding card right there. Ray Sadecki. Philadelphia Phillies team card, and the hit for Jack. There he is. Mickey Mantle pops up in pack number 49. 1960 tops, a beautiful-looking Mickey Mantle card. That's the one a lot of you guys were waiting to see. And there's still a Willie Mays coming up in one of these three packs, along with two other Hall of Famers. I, I don't remember who else we're missing. I know Willie Mays is one of them. One in three chance, but let's take a look at the Mickey Mantle. Let's flip it over and show you the back. They did not grade this card, but you can see that it is in pretty darn good shape. No creases, no writing, and um, very, yeah, best card in the set right there. Mickey Mantle, card number 350. Love that card. Very, very nice. Jack, congratulations on that one. If you sent that off, you'd probably get like a PSA 3 on it or so. Somewhere around there. At the most, PSA 4, I would imagine, since it's a PSA 3 set. The corners aren't perfect, but they're pretty darn good. Uh, nice one right there. Usually mantles in that condition will be at least, oh, I'd say $200 or more. How much was it to enter? It was $64, and we have... Three Hall of Famers left. Let's see who they are. Rich, you have spot number 50. The only one I know that we're missing is a Willie Mays. I, I don't know who else is still out there. Wave of Cards says, congrats, Jack. Card of the night. Anybody else remember who else is still missing? Uh, Rich, let's see what you can find. Scott and Robert are on deck. I know that Scott and Robert are probably sitting in front of... Uh, Google right now trying to figure it out. Orlando Cepeda was already pulled, and Yogi Berra was already pulled as well. Let's see who we have for Rich. Jim Gentile leading things off with Ed Bailey. Manuel says, I love this. Well, thank you very much, Manuel. I, this was a fun one to do. Pete Runnels, this card is the worst condition card of the entire set that we've seen. I would give that, well, I, there's no creases, but I'd probably give that one a one. We have a Richard Stewart card. Righty Lockman. Whitey Ford was already pulled. We already pulled two Roger Maris cards. Mike says, fun rip tonight. Wave cards. This is a really cool idea. Thanks, man. Here comes the uh, Hall of Famer. It is going to be... Nick says it's going to be early win. It is Warren Spawn. Warren Spawn base card. I forgot about Warren. We saw his, uh, his other card come up in the set where he was kind of schooling some young Braves pitchers. And there is Warren Spawn. So a 50-50 chance now at um, Willie Mays. Rich, congratulations on Spawn. How do you get in on the breaks? You have to be a member of my Patreon page. A link is in the description to this video. It's $3 per month, and it gets you access to the, all the breaks. Uh, maybe if you guys like these set breaks, the next time maybe I'll make five card packs, and then that way we can get more people in. I had 52 spots for this one, and... Uh, it sold out. It didn't sell out right away. It sold out maybe in a couple hours. But uh, there was a lot more people that wanted to get in uh, that didn't see it when the posting was up there. But maybe the next time we do one of these. This was really fun. I had a blast with Heather putting these together, by the way. Very, very fun looking at all these cards. All right, Scott, 50-50 shot at Willie Mays. Let's see who you have in spot number 51. 
And then we have one more pack left. And for those of you, since every card is represented in this set, you could, if you're really keeping track, you know exactly who's coming up or you know the 22 cards from the set that we have not yet seen. There's Gary Giger, Geiger. Uh, Maris is not a Hall of Famer. Bob Allison, Gold Cup card. Steve Korchak. Then we have an Arnie Porta Carrero card right there. Ernie Johnson from the Cleveland Indians. Bob Boyd, there's an Eddie Fisher card. Next up, we have a Bob Rush, Cal Neiman, and here comes the Hall of Famer. It is either Willie Mays or somebody else that we've since forgotten that was in here. Let's see who it is. It is Duke Snyder. I think somebody said it. Mike R. said it. Duke Snyder, Hall of Famer. So, Scott, congratulations on that one. That only means one thing. Willie Mays is in the last pack for Robert. And if he's not, he he darn well better be because I made these packs myself. I remember looking at the Mays and kind of like drooling over it. Not literally, but like looking at it for a little while. The Mod Beat says, this is the best break you've done. Do it again. Thank you, man. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And you got me wanting to do this again with like a 52 top set. Uh, here we go. Last pack. We know that Willie Mays should be in here for Robert. So, Robert, you got to be happy that you have a Mays, but the I guess the surprise appeal is gone. So, here we go. Willie Mays incoming. Let's see what we can find for you right now. We lead things off with Gene Stevens. Next up, we have an Art Succarelli card. Uh, Bob Perky, there's Richard Donovan. We have a Jim Proctor rookie card. By the way, thank you, everybody, for being here. 900-plus people in here right now. Hope you guys enjoyed looking at 1960 Tops with me tonight. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you along on YouTube for all these videos. We do older cards every Thursday. We call it Throwback Thursday. And um, here we go. The Hall of Famer, which you all know what's coming, it is... There he is. The Say Hey Kid, Willie Mays. That is the last card of the set. You have seen all 572 cards of the 1960 Tops set. Willie Mays, the last one. So thank you very much to all of our Patreon patrons that participated in this. If you'd like to participate in any of our breaks, such as this one, or we'll be doing Museum Collection and also 2020 Optic Choice, brand new product. We'll be doing those on Sunday. If you'd like to participate in any of those, check out the Patreon page. Link is in the description. It's $3 per month to have access to those. Willie Mays, last card right there. We'll show you the back. They give it a VG3. Card number 200 of the set. So Aaron got number 300 and Willie Mays got card number 200. And that one goes to Robert. So Robert, congratulations. And if you guys like uh, this uh, idea that I had here for these old old time set breaks. We could do some more of these. I had fun looking at them. This is really the only way we're ever going to open cards this old and get to show you every single card in the set. So thanks for hanging out on this Thursday evening. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday. And uh, there's Triple B says, two bucks for Camille. Great break. Thank you very much, Camille. Yes, you will have a Whitey Ford sent directly to your house. And since uh, we were emailing back and forth earlier today, um, I'll just send you that tracking number so you can track that as well. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Tomorrow, I'm planning on doing the Big Bat Box a little bit earlier in the afternoon and then Face Off Friday as well. Saturday, we're going to have the Saturday Showdown. I'm probably going to do some museum collection. I have some leftover boxes from my personal case. We'll do that. We'll put that up for sale on Patreon. And uh, Sunday, if I can get it edited, we may do our baseball card store video where I spent $1,000 last weekend at a few local card stores. We'll show you what I bought and um, see what we can find. All right, everybody, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday, and I will see you later. Adam, thank you very much for the subscription. Have a great rest of your Thursday. 